Hello, I'm Amanda Call, and today I would like to tell you about proper brush care and maintenance. So as you know, I am a comic artist and I do all of my work traditionally. So what that means is that I actually draw my comic on sheets of paper that uh, I then have to ink with a, a pen or a brush. Uh, most of the time, I prefer to use a brush for my figures and a pen for my backgrounds. I talk about this at length on a lot of like my live art streams. Because of this, having a really good brush and taking really good care of it is essential to my workflow. So I would like to share with you some good tips on how to take care of and maintain your brushes, keep them clean and in good working order for as long as possible. So what kind of brush am I going to be giving you tips on today? Well, a lot of my advice can really apply to any type of brush, but specifically I'm going to be focusing on natural bristle brushes that are meant for wet, uh, water-based media. Um, so the one that I use is the Winsor & Newton Series 7 Sable Brush. I tend to use a size 4. Um, so they're made of actual sable natural bristles. These are not synthetic. These actually come from a little weasel-like animal known as a sable. <laughs> They're kind of adorable and they make excellent brushes! I'm sorry, all my vegan friends. I won't be talking about just any type of wet media, I am actually going to be talking specifically about India ink. So that's stuff like uh, this stuff right here or this stuff right here. It's nice and dark, it's full of carbon, it's nice and sticky and opaque and can make an absolute mess of your brush just by virtue of using it. So uh, you have to be very careful about maintaining your brushes if this is your primary medium, like it is mine. Before I get too far into anything, I'm gonna go over some basic brush anatomy so that when I'm using these terms throughout the rest of this video, you will know what on earth I am talking about. So we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look at our little brush friend. Here's your basic primer on brush anatomy. This long wooden part is the handle. It can be long or short depending on the style of brush and is usually made of wood, then painted or varnished to protect it from moisture. Some brushes do have plastic handles, but you don't usually see this in higher end brushes. This metal bit in the middle is called the ferrule. It's the part that holds the bristles together and attaches them to the handle. It's held in place with a combination of glue and metal crimping. All the way down at this end are the bristles or fibers. These can be made from natural fibers like sable, squirrel, or hog's hair, or they can be made from synthetic fibers like nylon or polyester. The bristles are held in place inside the ferrule with glue and are cut and arranged to form different shapes. This brush is a round shape, but you may have also seen brushes with square or fan-shaped bristles. Hi, so we've just moved over about six inches to my drafting table uh, because one of the important parts of brush maintenance is actually in how you use the brush. You want to make sure that you're using it in such a way that you are not unintentionally causing problems for it and yourself later. Uh, so let's uh, have a demonstration, shall we? Alright, so one of the first things is when you are loading up your ink, uh, you're not going to be jamming that down in there until you're bristles are completely saturated in ink, you only want to go about like halfway up the belly of the bristles there. Just go in until you get about halfway up. You don't want to go much more than that because then it's starting to get sucked up into the ferrule and that's actually very difficult to clean effectively and that ink up inside the ferrule is going to be hardening and stiffening the bristles from the base and making it harder for the brush to hold its shape because the bristles are not actually able to lie the way they're supposed to. They've got a bunch of ink stiffening them up. Um, you also want to just wipe a little bit of the excess ink off on the edge of your bottle, which is why the edge of my ink well is um, chunky. When you actually go to use the brush, obviously there's lots of different techniques of how you can do that, and you do you. The one thing I'm going to say you don't want to do is you don't want to take your brush and uh, go at it like a four-year-old. I, I have small children, I've seen how they paint, so we don't want any of uh, this business. No straight down 90 degree angle, this is not a sumi brush that is not how you're supposed to use it. Brushes that are meant to be used that way, obviously you can, but you're still not going to like mash them. You're going to do it with a very light touch. Uh, so yeah, generally I use the brush 
with a very light touch. I keep it at a little bit of an angle. Uh, and even when I'm filling in really large dark areas, I'm doing it in a con like large spot blacks. I'm doing it in a very gentle, controlled manner. So we're just going to come at it kind of like this. And after you make however many strokes it takes until you have used up the ink that is in the brush, it's going to be probably more than you think, unless you didn't get that much ink on there. You don't have to do this every time you reload your brush, but every so often as you're working, what you're going to want to do is to actually give your brush a quick rinse. So like I said, you don't have to do this every time that you go to reload your brush, but you know, like every, maybe like every four or five times or so. I'm gonna just have a little jar of water. I swear to you, this is clear, <laughs> clean water. My water jar jar is just, it's, it's, it's seen some things. You're just gonna stick your brush in there and swirl it around. Do not, do not get it all the way in there. Do not submerge it past the ferrule. You can get it like up to the ferrule. Get that in there. Do not submerge it past the ferrule. Do not get that wooden handle wet. Don't do it. We're getting water in between the ferrule and the wood. Yes, the outside of the wood is painted to protect it, but you know what? There's an unpainted tip inside there, and if water gets in between that wood and that ferrule, you are gonna have problems. Just uh, swirl it around. Don't scrape it on the bottom. Don't scrape it on the sides. Just swirl it around in the water to help rinse out some of that, and then just kind of gently wipe off on the sides. If you're like working in ink like I am, I don't really want any water in my ink. I don't want an ink wash. I still want just ink. So I'm going to give it a quick, just gentle wipe on the paper towel that I keep right here while I'm working. So that's pretty much what you have to do in order to properly maintain your brush while you are using it. Now we're going to move on to how you clean it once you are done for the day. A couple of quick notes before we get into washing your brushes. One of the things is you want to make sure that the water that you are using is not too hot. It doesn't have to be like cold, but you also don't want it to be hot. Lukewarm is good because then the soap works nicely and you're not freezing your hands off and it helps to just break everything up, but you do not want hot. And there are reasons for that. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. Hair is made out of protein. What else is made out of protein? Breakfast. So allow me to give you a quick demonstration of what happens when protein encounters heat. Good for breakfast. Not very good for brush maintenance. All right, yes, I know I'm being hyperbolic here. Obviously the water that you're gonna use to wash your brushes is not gonna be as hot as a frying pan. But if you're like me and have crappy circulation, sometimes you don't realize how hot the water that you're using actually is. And it can be hot enough to start damaging the bristles in your brush. The big takeaway here is that heat causes protein to stiffen and you do not want the bristles to start to stiffen because when they stiffen, they're not gonna do their job as well and eventually they're going to break. This advice pretty much applies for synthetic brushes too. While their heat tolerance might be a little bit different, synthetic bristles are made out of plastic and what does plastic do in heat? It warps and melts. <laughs> you don't want that either because you're gonna run into the same issue of your brush not holding shape and ultimately the bristles breaking. Hello, and welcome to my bathroom. To clean your brush, you're going to need a few supplies. First is window cleaner. I keep some of it in an old spice jar. Next is regular old hand soap. Finally, you need a container of brush cleaner and conditioner. While cleaning your brush, you want to be sure to use lukewarm water. Give it a quick rinse under running water to get any wet ink that's still hiding in there out. First, you're going to give the brush a quick dip in the window cleaner. 
Uh, yeah, so a little note. The Windex thing is a little bit controversial. Some people are going to tell you that it is too harsh and you shouldn't use it because of the damage it could do to the glue inside of the ferrule that are keeping the bristles in place. Part of the thing I have to say about that is that the reason I use the Windex first in this whole step is that then not only do I rinse it really thoroughly right after I use it, it also gives me a chance to make sure that in the following steps, any bit of it that's left in there gets rinsed out. For what it's worth, I've been using Windex to clean the first layer of gunk off my brushes for a couple of years now, and I have never had an issue with bristles falling out or any other kind of degradation of the brush from that. So I think it works just fine. Then you're going to work the cleaner through the brush by laying it flat against the palm of your hand and gently rolling it. You'll apply almost no pressure. We're not trying to mash the bristles against your hand here. Just give them something to roll against to work, to work the cleaning solution through them. This is the motion you'll use for all the other stages of cleaning too. Rinse out the window solution under lukewarm water. Now you're going to move on to the hand soap. Squirt a small amount into the palm of your hand and then use the same gentle rolling motion to work the soap through the bristles of the brush. You can see how the ink starts really working out here. I usually give the brush a quick rinse and then give it another round of rolling around in the soap until I don't see any more ink coming out. Rinse the brush again under running water and you can even repeat the rolling motion against your palm to rinse until you no longer feel any soap sliminess. Finally, you're going to use the brush conditioner. Stop, stop. This part is important. This is brush conditioner. Th this, this right here, this thing that says brush cleaner and preserver, and it comes in a little solid pad thing. It's, it's solid. And you buy it in an art supply store. This is the conditioner you use for brushes. Do not use the same conditioner that you use for hair. Conditioner that's made for the hair on your head is made to make your hair look nice and be shiny and bouncy and all those wonderful things that we like in the hair on people's heads. But I'm not interested in the bristles on my brush looking shiny and bouncy. They have a job to do and that job is to hold and transfer ink or other water-based media out of its source and onto the paper as effectively as possible. Human hair conditioner is not going to do that. It is going to coat and make a gross mess of the bristles and make it so that ink and other watercolors and things are not gonna wanna stick to it. And it's just, it's just, don't do it. I've actually heard of people doing this. Please don't do this. I mean, I understand the logical leaps that somebody goes through where they're like, hey, conditioner is great for my hair and my brush is made out of real hair, so maybe I should put conditioner on it. And I, I, I get what you're saying, but your hair's job is to look fabulous. The hair on your brush's job is to move media around. It is not to look fabulous. The looking fabulous will get in the way of its actual job, which is to move your media from place to place in a controlled manner. Take the wet brush and gently stroke it against the conditioner at a shallow angle so you don't mash the bristles out of shape. Repeat the rolling motion against your palm like before to work the conditioner through the brush. At this point, you shouldn't see any more ink coming out of the bristles. Give the brush one final very quick rinse since we want some of the conditioner to stay in the bristles. I also washed off some of the soap that had gotten on the handle here. At the very end, you'll want to reshape the bristles. You can do this by holding the bristles in the fold of your palm, the one right below the meaty bit where your fingers meet your palm. Lay the brush down flat and gently close your palm around it. Slowly pull the brush out while twisting it and this will reshape a round bristle brush nicely. 
Alternatively, you can do the same thing in your mouth, using your lips instead of your palm to hold the bristles in shape, but it will taste a little bit like brush conditioner, which isn't great. If you still have the little tip protector that came with your brush, you should put it back on to store it. Just be careful not to bang it into the bristles and knock them back out of shape when you put it on. This tip protector is helpful because you want to store your brush upside down. Storing it upside down helps the bristles maintain their shape nicely since gravity won't be pulling them back out and keeps any moisture that's still in the brush from settling down in the ferrule and slowly dissolving the glue. If you don't still have the protector or your brush never came with a fancy protector and tube, there are still all sorts of cool products and hacks on how to still store your brush in this way. So why is it so important to be doing all of this anyway? Well, one of the things is you obviously just wanna take care of your tools. It's good to take care of the things that you own so you don't have to replace them as often. You get as, a lot more use out of them. Obviously, you're not talking about a lot of materials wasted here, but uh, I mean, anything that you can avoid throwing away for as long as possible, you should. Additionally, uh, natural fiber brushes are really expensive. <laughs> You can get these online at a pretty substantial discount, and um, this brush is like somewhere in the realm of $30 um, for a brush, for a single brush. So obviously I try to get as much use out of them as I possibly can. And the better that you maintain the brush, then the better it's going to work for you too. If you don't clean it regularly and let it get all kind of gunky and misshapen, then you're not going to be able to get the same kind of control that you would like to out of it. And it's going to make it a lot more frustrating to work with and ultimately lead to you moving on to another brush sooner. So now you know how to wash and care for your brushes. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything I have or have not covered here. If you found this information helpful, then I'd love it if you would like this video and share with anyone you know who could use it. So Subscribe for more art-related videos, thanks, and I'll see you next time! Could you be, like, literally anywhere else right now? Possibly.